Greeting YouTube. Um, as I've mentioned recently in a number of videos, because it's things I'm still processing, I was recently diagnosed as autistic, and it has helped a whole lot of chips fall into place. It makes a lot of sense in many ways. And it's got me thinking about relationships that I've had and have in the present and the past. Um, I am a very loyal friend. There are things that can happen that will make me end a relationship. But they're few and far between. I had a friend once that told me he wasn't going to vaccinate his kid. And five minutes later, I severed my single relationship I had with him. I never communicated with him again. In the time it took my wife to get into the shower, I walked into the bathroom. I said, yeah, I just cut off ties with Paul. And she was just dumbfounded. She was in tears. Because I could be that absolute cut and dry. Snip. Gone. But if something like that doesn't happen, and you're in my life, even if you walk away, and that's happened many times, my feelings toward you are very likely going to be exactly the same they were the last time I saw you. That my relationship with you has entered a stasis state. It's just kind of on hold in limbo. Now, sometimes people lose touch. They have complicated things that happen in their lives. Sometimes they get wrapped up in their own mental illness and neurodivergence. Of the friends I had as a, as a child, I would be very surprised if any of them were neurotypical. Um, we were all a bunch of freaks and we found each other. But in some cases, that means a lot of us aren't all that stable and sometimes we're not that good at keeping in touch. And I learned over time that I was a hub. That I was a one, the one that kept a disparate group of friends connected. I was the one that made arrangements. I was the one that set up things to do together. Not that we did not enjoy ourselves together. They, we always did, to one degree or another. I mean, if you're gamers, you're bound to have conflicts. I'm talking about tabletop gaming, folks. The real thing. But I was the hub. And at one point I noticed it. And so I stopped. And for two months I called no one. And no one called me. And that's when I began to realize that even if my feelings for someone hadn't changed, I don't necessarily hold the same place in their lives as they did in mine. Sometimes people step out of your life because they just move away. They're, they move to a different place. In one case, a friend moved to Rocky Mountains. And neither of us was great at long-distance relationships. But it didn't change the fact that I still cared for him. And I still do. I don't know what our greeting would be like now. It might be a little strange. But I found myself the other day thinking about him. And I found myself almost in tears as I grieved over the loss that I had never processed really until that moment. He and I, at a time in our lives, were two people in the same skin. We could look at, each other, look at each other in the eyes and an entire conversation could pass between us. And we each, each knew exactly what the other was thinking. It annoyed the crap out of my wife. And I still have fond memories of the stories that we made with each other. The tales I still tell. 
And some of my friends did things that I don't really have want to, want to forgive them for. I have a friend that cheated on his wife and left for another state to have a relationship with someone he'd been in love with since high school. And had never really processed it until he I met her again as, as an adult in his 40s. And suddenly their relationship was there and he left and pursued it anew. Funnily enough, it was a situation where two brothers ended up with two sisters. Yeah. But my feelings towards my friends pretty much don't change. I still miss them. Whether they're in New Jersey or in Maine or Colorado or Massachusetts or anywhere else in the world. My feelings for them just kind of exist. And it's frustrating sometimes because I know I don't hold I don't hold the same place in their hearts as they do in mine. And they have spouses and they have kids and they have jobs and they have careers and they have passions. And I do not wish for a second to think that I should discount them or think of myself as being as important as them. I'm not trying to say that I am an ego that needs to be fed. But I miss them. And I miss the youth where we would just hang out together. One day my roommate and I were at the house and she had folded some laundry for me because I am horrible at folding laundry. I, I always have been. I never seem to do it quite very, very well. Though I do the laundry here, I'm in charge of doing it. I just don't fold it very well. Um, and she came into the living room and handed me a pair of pants that I guess had gotten mixed in with her things. And she handed it to me and I just kind of nonchalantly put them on top of my head and she shook her head and she walked away. And then my friend stopped by at the house and I had to open the door with the hand to pants on my head. And we sat down and we had a conversation, 45, 50 minutes. And eventually he got up and left. And my roommate walked into the living room and she looked at me and said, those pants have been on top of your head for that entire time, haven't they? I said, yes. He never said a word. He, he never mentioned the pants. I miss that. But it's something that you do when you're in your teens and your 20s. As you get older, those connections begin to sever. So if you're a younger person, listen to this, and you think that you're always going to have your friends to just pal around with, you're not. If you could hold on to a handful, if you could hold on to two, consider yourself blessed. You're one of the lucky ones. Now, I do have friends here, just not many. As corny as it sounds, my best friend is my wife. And the person that's next in line is my friend Amy. Someone I've never met. I've never heard her voice. I've never seen her picture. We communicate over text, emails, texts exclusively. And we contact with each other every single day without fail, multiple times a day, sharing laughs and pains and news and funnies, what have you. But it's not the same as just being able to knock on someone's door and hang out with them or have them stop at your house without an, without any planning just because they wanted to see you. This got a little broader than I thought it was going to be. I apologize. If nothing else, you got to hear the pants story. Hold on to your friends. You're going to need them. And if you're very, very lucky, and if the gods have smiled at you, 
they're going to need you too.